Hello there, this is Tamil, and in today's video, I really wanted to focus on the new filters that are coming in for Clip Studio Paint uh, 3.0. Um, I already made a quick video talking about just generally new features that are coming in, so if you want to check that out, uh, you can go ahead and do that. But today, I really wanted to transform this piece of artwork that I've made recently, and I really wanted to make it more vintage and kind of retro style, and I used the new filters that are uh, coming in. And uh, another thing, if you really like this tutorial and you want to check out kind of like a written version, if you want to just go key points by key points, then I highly recommend checking out the article in the description I wrote for Clips to Paints. Other than that, let's just get into the tutorial so that you can learn how to use them and you can improve your artwork. So we have ourselves Clip Studio Paint open and I have two elements in here. One is going to be literally a picture of a room. So this is an old picture I took a while ago. It was just a really cool interior. And uh, the other one is literally just a painting of a girl. Uh, my style is showing too much in this one, but it doesn't look cool enough, quote unquote. So today um, I just wanted to go over some filters for Clip Studio Paint that were added recently that we can use uh, to blend these pictures together to make it look more vintage and to uh, just play around with colors. So let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is go to layer, go to duplicate, and I'm going to have myself a separate layer that I can mess around with. So this is kind of important part um, because all the filters are destructive. So you don't want to have an edited picture that is going to get destroyed because then you're going to cry for hours like I did the first time using this. But I have this separate layer, I have filter effect, and in here we can go into pencil drawing. And as you can see, there are three options that are main. Uh, we can keep the grayscale, which in most cases you can use this to um, make your entire image black and white. Here we can also turn off the hatching. And if we keep it like this, uh, you can really see that we are getting a really nice pencil drawing uh, effect on this and it's going to be transparent. So I can literally keep it transparent. Uh, make a new layer below and then I can just pick a like a vintage ish color like this fill it in and boom I have myself kind of like a, a background but not really um, and I can add to this so maybe add a little bit of color here a little bit of color here and it's a really nice base uh, to start working in and uh, honestly other programs I don't think they have uh, like a really good pencil filter compared to this. So if we go back and we turn on the sh hatching, you can see that it uh, desaturates the picture first, uh, but also the hatching is barely visible. And I'm a type of artist uh, and just my teachers always suggested me, if you're trying to convey something and show something, uh, go all the way. If, if you're showing, let's say a pencil hatching and it barely looks like a pencil hatching, go like all the way see how it's gonna look so i'm gonna go um hatching like all the way to 10 and you can see um that it's not hatching like exactly it kind of adds like a bump filter on top and so that's why uh, we can play around with the angle so i like uh, my angle to do kind of like a 90 degree so that way our eyes are kind of more um adjusted to it and you can play with opacity too so you can just um, put it all the way down to let's say like three, click OK, and then you go into like 50% um, mixing. So now we can have this. It's obviously, you know, it's all up to you and the way you want to do it. So the next thing is I'm going to spice uh, things up with the background being a little bit more glitchy. And I'm going to use a chromatic abbreviation for that. Um, I have combined my pencil with my background it's very simple colors nothing too fancy and I'm gonna go into filter and effects and in here we're gonna find chromatic operation and as you can see it gives this like really nice kind of glitch effect um, and we can move this around for like where kind of like from where it's starting um, there's a, gonna be a second mode which is uh, lateral uh, which is literally gonna use an angle for everything so it's not gonna look at it like a specific spot it's just gonna be like oh this is the part that you want to um, adjust 
And uh, another thing is obviously intensity, if you don't want to be like too much and too overbearing on the image, uh, which is what I like to do. That's one of the things uh, and angle you can play around with, like how far it's going and which way it's going. So I'm going to click OK. And uh, I like the effect, uh, like it has like a little bit subtlety to it. And in here, I'm going to go ahead and do a little trick. I'm going to duplicate my character. I'm going to go ahead and apply the effect again. So effect chromatic aberration. And as you can see, it's nice. Like if you add just a little bit, like a very, very old school anime back in the day uh, when they would transfer <laughs> and they would transfer the drawings into digital and show it on the broadcast network. Um, a lot of times you would get this like kind of effect of a little glow behind the edges. So I really like this like little effect. So I'm going to do that. So I'm going to click OK. So that's cool. So I added a little bit of this effect. If I want to go even further, here's another one. I'm going to duplicate it again. I know I, can't, I keep duplicating it, but hear me out. Hear me out. Uh, going to be chromatic. I go like all the way. Right. But you can uh, create focus in your image by having this like this is too much. But uh, I can go ahead and make myself a mask. So I'm going to click the mask button uh, and I'm going to go into erasers. And in here I can uh, set my eraser to let's say like uh, 200 and remove it a little bit one by one just a tiny bit from the parts that are important. So her face, super important. Her legs and her arms may be like not so much important for me in terms of clarity. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and keep it like this. And uh, after all of this, I can go into layer, I can go into merge visible to a new layer. So now I have everything uh, in one space, just like this. And now I will go ahead and go into filter and in here, we can also go into effects and we go into retro film. So retro film is just one of those old school things that we used to take like Polaroid pictures and film pictures. Um, there's a lot of presets here that are going to be helpful. So there's uh, warm, modern, vintage. You can go um, different ones. And obviously you can also adjust uh, what effect you're gonna get. And uh, for those who don't know what <laughs> light leak uh, means, uh, what it means is you had uh, a piece of film in your camera that you would like roll out and look at after taking pictures and you would send it to the lab to develop. I know it's uh, getting like a little bit nerdy, but you would send it and that roll, if it is exposed to light a little bit too much in a, like a wrong way, you get those light bleeds. So it's unintentionally getting too much like a purple color or red color in specific parts of the image. A lot of people now it's like a stylistic choice. Uh, but back in the day, it would be like a little tiny mistake from a photographer uh, standpoint. So depends what you like, depends on uh, where you want your image to look like. In the effect panel, we can play with either sepia, which is the uh, effect of one itself. So sepia makes everything a little bit gray. Uh, light leak is the little part that kind of blows out uh, the image or we can go sepia plus uh, light leak so it kind of combines the both of the uh, parts of the image I really like the the light leak in this case scenario because and you can play around like which way it's gonna go um, so really up to you what you want to use and uh, intensity obviously don't go too much with this like <laughs> don't go like like this like all the way um, so really, whatever you think is right for your specific image, just play around and uh, you can also, you know, go back and just kind of reduce the opacity again, just like just a little bit like this and then increase it, decrease it, whatever you want. Um, so I really like this. And to make it even more uh, vintage, one last thing that I enjoy using, especially like old school vintage anime. If you've seen it, uh, you really notice it now that uh, they used to draw and convert it to film and there would be a lot of noise. What I'm going to do and I go into filter, I'm going to go into effects again, and I'm going to go into noise. And in here, 
we have two primary options, which is um, color or gray. And personally, I like the color one. I think noise just makes everything so much better because um, this is cool, but it's kind of empty and it feels weird uh, to the viewer. Um, especially if you view it on a screen, on Instagram, it just kind of feels plain. But if you go into effects and go into noise and you add that a little bit of kind of uh, spark in there, you know, uh, obviously don't go overboard with this. Like, <laughs> don't go like a thousand. Like, this is a little bit too much. Uh, but personally, I like to add noise. Plus, it keeps your image a little bit safer because it's harder for people to uh, steal it. So I go like... Let's say all the way to 25, right? So I go like this. And now uh, you don't really notice it, but it has like this subtle effect um, to it. Even though it's a digital painting, you still can play around with different effects in Clip Studio Paint to make it more vintagey. And uh, as you can see, like let's go back all the way to how it was. So this was the original. And we go to this one. And I think. This is pretty decent. Like if I keep working on this and I keep um, adding specific colors, I really enjoy how this glow highlight turned out on her shoulder. I really like it. I don't know why, but it just, it gives me this nostalgia feel. So hopefully this was helpful. Um, I really like the new filters and clips to the paint. I think you should check them out. Just don't go overboard with them. Catch you on the flip side.